I don't really want to drop there, but uh, the marker is there. Yep, the mysterious plaque right there. I'm coming! I'm grabbing it very quickly. Nergal, the fierce one. Yep. Uh, can I climb somehow up? Nope. I hear... I hear some of those creatures here. Where's my trusty bow? I'm freaking out. I crouch. I crouch and I try to shoot straight. What are those? Look at them. Their color is so different. Oh, oh, yep. That's not freaky. Oh, thank you for looking at me. Oh, again. Stop staring at me. Oh, this game can be very creepy. Oh, look at this. Wow. Love this game. I hope it won't be so creepy with this. With this. Heating mummies. Is there mummies here? Are those gonna move? So golden rule and I'm gone. I've been here for a very long time. You wanna fight? Show some What am I doing? I do not see there's some boulder there. Okay. Nothing interesting. Heal. Nothing. Nothing. Alright, I'll get the bow. I feel more secure with it. She's pointing that way. I've got the plaque. Can I get out? Ancient stone tablet. What does it say? Stranger had the final words of Namkuzu. Bear witness to our aftermath and lament us. We did our best to live as the gods commanded. We planted and harvested together. We shared bread and beer. We accepted newcomers with open arms as if a family. But with each newcomer the bonds of our family strained and soon we were a stranger's to each other and when those bonds were finally broken my brothers and sisters planned planted only for themselves and ate and drank alone and it was there in the empty space between us that sin took root Nergal's centen sentinels have awoken and clamor at our barricades learn from our miss Okay. All right. Very sad story indeed. I mean, they tried. Oh, I'm I'm I'm, I'm trying to avoid those creepy creatures. What is there? Okay, I can't go there. All right. Fine. Where's my ball? No ball, please. Bow, please. Bow. What is this thing? Brass plate. A corroded bolster with Sumerian marking. Oh, Sumerian markings. It appears to be a pressure plate for some kind of trap. Ah! There's a trap here. Oh, nice, nice. I will walk away from the trap. Thank you very much. Thank God for the archaeologist. Yeah, my statue. Oh, so nerve wracking, honestly. I'm expecting to be attacked any second. Is there anything interesting here? Oh, oh okay. Strange object. A strange stone object in the shape of a 
suitcase. Yeah, it does. We'll probably never know what it was for. No. Another trap, another trap. Am I walking in circles? I just want to leave this place. Is there a door there? Should I go there? There's a door there. I need to have a look. It's probably closed. But, you know. I just said I want to get out of this place, but... Oh, no, it's blocked. Alright, fair enough, fair enough. I'm going this way. I'm done. This looks up, so this looks promising. I swear she's gonna turn on me. No? Okay, fine. What's that way? I really don't care. We oh. might told you that you would not find a way back ah, up. Keep that was not a prediction. That was a promise. Uh, you will die here. Please don't shoot. There's no need for this to end in violence. I disagree. Uh, I warned you against coming down here. Against perpetuating this sacrilege, but you persisted. You have undermined and dishonored the true God of the underworld. How did you think this would end if not with bloodshed? Trust him, yeah. Very well, I will oh. listen. But if I sense deception, or if you further insult my gods, I will carry out my threat. So tell me. Why should I let you live after you salvaged this instrument of blasphemy? Alright, we, we should thread carefully here. If something can be destroyed by the truth, you deserve to be destroyed by the truth. There is no shame in building on the works of people who came before you. I'm just trying to replace all the plaques taken from the desecrated obelisk. I'll tell the truth. Why? To what end? Okay. I'm hoping it'll earn me an audience with the god of the under. Just to restore honor to the god of the under. Okay, I'm hoping. But why? What business could you have with Osiris? Uh, pay him respect. I'm going to confront him about the god. I'm going to demand that he let everyone go. I'm going to kill him. Just, just let everyone go. Blasphemous fool! You have sealed your own but fate. Poop. Wait. If you attack me, you'll break the golden rule. Good. I welcome it. Oh. You see, the philosopher told me that each time it breaks, Osiris bellows with rage, and his voice shakes oh. the very foundations of the earth. I can only hope one more tremor will lay waste to this fragile place once and for all, and you along with it. Oh no. The many what? shall suffer what? for the sins of the world. They're all shooting at me. Oh, wow, this is, this is brilliant. I don't know where I'm, where I'm... How did I... How did I miss... Oh, there's a ladder. Ah! Arrow in my ass! Arrow in my ass! Nice ladders. Like seriously, what should I have told him? I don't know. Oh, 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 oh. This looks Egyptian. Okay, we... We will die here together. No, thank you. Oh, right. Their eyes are... Shiny. Where am I going? Okay, I'm going that way. Ah, oh, shit. This is... Not scary whatsoever. Oh, uh, wait, I, I. Oh my god. This is so scary. What? This, this, this is wrong way. I ran the wrong way. Oh, please let me out of here. Please, 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 please. please. Yes. 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 Yes.
This is not the way out. I seriously don't remember how I got here. What the? What the? Oh. 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 Will this ever end, this catacombs? Oh. Can I, can I please, please, can I just go? Where did the grandpa go? Anyway, the philosopher. Is this the way out? Where, where, where am I going? I don't know, I just fell down. Oh. What? Wrong way. Wrong bloody way. Alright, I need to stop and think. Which which way did I come in here? Is it this way? Please be the right way, please be the right way. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Higher, higher. Oh. Oh. Yes. Oh, cr crouch. Oh. Is this the philosopher? George's? Hammer, Hermit and Galerius. What did they say? He's terrified I should try talking to him. Alright. Sorry guys, I'm gonna open the door and run. No, run! To stop this madness. Whoa. Dodge, dodge, dodge. We got the four plaques. We got the four plaques. We got the. Oh, she moved the statue. I get the monies. Ha ha. She's gonna shoot me in the ass. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, two of them. Dead. Where, where will I be? Oh no! This is unfair. I told you that you would not find a way back up, <sighs> that was not a prediction. That was a promise. You will die here. There's no need to... Oh, well, I think we get a chance to talk to him again. I disagree. Right, right. You have underman. Just hear me out. Very okay. Um... Ah. Oh. Alright, let's go with the plaques again. I'm sure you're screaming at me. Why? To what end? I'm saying. Just to restore honor of the god of the underworld. He seems to be a lot about honor, so let's go but with that. That makes no sense. How would it honor him to place false names on his sacred Tekenu? If God succeeds, it is impossible. They each have more than one true name. Now that I think about it, my people would sometimes call Osiris the god of many names. Perhaps it is so. But the underworld of my people is so different to this one, and so unlike the way it was described by our priests. Many of my ancestors endured great hardship to live good lives so that we may descend to the Duat in death and be judged accordingly. 
and to swear ourselves innocent of sin before the 42 assessors of Ma'at. And yet I arrive here to find the book of the dead contained only a seed of truth. And now I ask myself, did our priests steal and embellish the stories of an older people and feed us lies all our lives simply to trick us into obedience? Probably. Uh, probably, but you can blame your priests for that, not me. Isn't being a good person a worthwhile pursuit in in and of itself? Uh, okay. I am not sure I follow. Speak plainly. Oh, my Oh, oh I'm, I'm so stressed. Even if your beliefs about the afterlife weren't quite accurate. Isn't the important thing that they motivate you to lead good lives? If you were only good in life because you expected a reward, were you really a good person? I'll go with the first one. Hmm. Perhaps there is some truth in that. What is your point? Are you going to abandon our afterlife of good character now that it matters most just because you found out you were misled? Mm. You are persuasive. Oh. Very well. I will let you live, and you may do what you will with that black. I will remain here for a while and attempt to learn what I can about the foundations of my people's beliefs. Go. Alright. Oh. Okay. Oh. What is happening? What is happening? I, I stepped on the trap. What is happening? Why everything is shaking? And it stopped shaking. I'm still alive. I'm me out of this, this place. I mean, without Golden Rule being broken, but yep. I'll just go peacefully. Wow, what a, what a revelation is under here. It is so deep, this place many civilizations and wow and we found a way to um which way again i'm so lost is this the right way no i think that way um, and yeah, we found a way how to get the money, even if it cost me to die. Very, very, very humiliating death. But anyway. Mm -hmm. This place should be safe, right? And I'll run a little bit. Should we talk with the old man? I'll go ahead and put the plaques. I like how he got out. Ah, yep, I did. Do you wanna talk? Good to see you again, friend. You find what you need. Okay, I'll be getting out. Yep, yep, yep. Alright, I will. Don't you worry. What does it say? The men shall suffer. Yep. I know that. I think I came from that way. See, in panic, I can't think rationally. And I can't find my way in two doors. And I like how they were hiding the philosopher and Julius in the, in the temple. So yeah, the golden statues are not really um, smart. Let's load a little bit and crunch smooth. All right, let's see the god. Oop. All right, what? Why can I run? 
I think I can. Okay, I can run. I think we need to go upstairs. So yeah, it feels like whatever civilization was happening in real life, they would come to the underworld and yeah, replace them. And the underworld is changing too. Be careful who you trust. Yeah. Alright, let's put the planks. Yep. Pluto, the Greeks one, yep. The mystery plaque and I think Egyptian plaque. Here we go. Ooh. Ooh. I'm not falling. <laughs> oh, the door opened. What? The god is happy. Oh. And yep, the door closed. The statues are looking straight at me. How how speak his name? Okay, oh Hades, Lord of Many, grant me audience. Nergal, the fierce one, grant me an audience. Osiris, Pluto. Oh, grant me an audience. Oh, whose name I should say? Let's try the oldest one. Right. He's not happy. Any clues which names should I say? Let's go with the recent one. Then. If he doesn't like all this, he doesn't like. Let's do with father. Oh, maybe it's father of riches, lord of silence, lord of many. Let's try this one. Oh, second strike. You, Pluto? Oh, he likes Pluto. Okay, fair enough. I was about to go Pluto, but. So close now. Is that a good thing? Okay, it was Pluto, so before Pluto it was uh it was Hades. Okay, I think oh so this is before was Roman, now Greek. This is Egyptian, yep. Here we go, here we go. Oh, I love this, like, um, history. Alright, let's tell his Egyptian name. Uh, Osiris. So shiny. What? What? What is this madness? Whoa. Just, 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 whoa. There's Earth. Oh my goodness, can I just look around? We're in the spaceship. Of course, we're in the spaceship. The stars and Milky Way. Wow, this. Uh, I'm, I'm absolutely speechless. Just oh, and there's a Greek. Some oh, uh, I mean, it looks like Egyptian writing, but um, maybe wrong, but it looks cool. We meet at last. Is this Persephone or Persephone or whatever name is? Oh, here he is standing. I'm just gonna look around carefully, not initiate the talk. All right, is this safe to stand here? Yep. Okay, you say, who is that woman there? Who? Oh, this is Haron or Karen, and this is his wife Persephone, and I think that's the god. Alright. 
What's your story? My classic, my classic cliche question. Um, um, what is this place? It has come to be known simply as the underworld. Looks cool. And it exists because of a wager I made long ago. Wager? What is wager? What was the wager you made? Who built this city? How did you decide who comes here? How did humans learn about the underworld? Right. What waging? That is a long story. One that began over 3,000 years ago and continues to this day. You see, long ago my kin and I set out from our home on Elysium to search for other forms of life among the stars. We discovered your planet and witnessed your kind evolving from primates to something lawless and barbaric. And you all but destroyed yourselves, your two short lives being extinguished by violence and ignorance and disease. Yet Proserpina saw raw potential and persuaded the rest of us it would be squandered without our intervention and stewardship. So we revealed ourselves to your people in a place called Sumer. We offered guidance in agriculture, tool craft and law, and you called us gods. For a time we flourished, but soon you were too many for us to oversee. And as you spread from that cradle of civilization, we saw something disturbing. We had sown the seeds of dependency and confusion, and soon you returned to your old ways of violence and ignorance, this time in our name. My hmm. kin had seen enough and gave up on your coming, condemning you as barbaric and chaotic, scarcely more than animals. We began preparations to return to Elysium. Unspoiled by conflict and unimaginable human's beauty. But my Proserpina could not bear to abandon your kind without guidance, and knowing it would force the rest of us to leave her behind, she made an extraordinary sacrifice. She gave up her immortality to descend permanently to the ranks of humankind. And so she began her inescapable trajectory toward death. Horrified. I acted swiftly. I placed her in suspended animation in a deep, frozen sleep to prevent age and sickness from claiming her. And then I pleaded with Proserpina's father, for the Romans called Jupiter, to bring her with us to Elysium. It was and is my hope that once there, we might one day learn to undo what she has done to herself. But he refused. I did everything I could to persuade him. But he would not relent. He would rigidly uphold his final pronouncement. Humans were unworthy of ascension to Elysium. No exceptions would be made. But seeing that I was aggrieved, he proposed to wager, the terms of which were as follows. If even one human city could prove itself capable of living without sin for a single year, then Proserpina and all of humanity would be permitted to join us in Elysium. My part would be to remain behind, the last of my kind, to watch over you, without interfering, and to sit in silent judgment. And so my reward has been to languish here, enduring a three thousand year winter, waiting for the day your kind proves itself worthy of her faith in you, so that I might take her with me to Elysium, and unthaw my goddess of spring. And here I am, after all this time, still waiting. Wow, wow. 
how the story changed from him stealing her and all of that. Um, who are your kin? There were also gods who, like me, have been known by many names. But perhaps you knew them by their own names. Our leader, Jupiter, as well as Neptune, Saturn, Juno, Minerva, Mars, Venus, Apollo, Diana, Vulcan, Vesta, Ceres, and of course, my lovely Priscilla. Who built the city? The first wave of your kind arrived from the sooner. I had them build a city in their own fashion so that they might be comfortable and recreate their lives here. I had them build the entrance as a vertical shaft leading to baths to cleanse them of the sins of their former lives and to prevent escape. I watched wave after wave of Sumerians arrive, and as their civilization declined over the centuries, they were replaced by Egyptians. Of course, believing themselves to be the superior civilization, the Egyptians promptly built over what had been built before, and made it all the same mistakes. After another thousand years, the Greeks began to arrive, and then the Romans, and they all did the same thing. They built upon the underworlds of their predecessors, renamed their gods, and ensured their foundations. How did you decide who comes to here? To ensure the wage was fair, it was important that my subjects were chosen at random. To this end, I had my servant distribute a thousand tokens fashioned from the silver, a rare element at the time, across all the soup. Whoever died while in possession of one of them would be located by my servant in the ferry to this place, with no memory of how they arrived. As the tokens were discovered, Traded, smelted, and fashioned into trinkets, and eventually coins spreading to Egypt like seeds on the wind. Later, when they spread to Greece, they would come to be known as Charon's Ode, or as coins for the ferryman. Some placed coins in the mouths of their dead, hoping they would awaken here, though they had no way of knowing which coins were fashioned from the original tokens. In fact, Almost all of the tokens are accounted for, only two remain. And so after this wave destroys itself, as it is destined to do, your kind would have squandered the last of its potential to ascend beyond this rock, and Persephone is along with it. Mm, I feel no win-win for any of us, not for him, not for us. Oh, how did humans learn about the underworld? It is a regrettable story. One of the first men who came to this place was the king of Sumer, the troublemaker. To be rid of him, I returned him to his people on the condition that my servant erased his memories of this place. But the erasure did not take completely. He told stories of this place as if describing memories of a dream. His tales were committed to writing came to be known as the Epic of Gilgamesh. His words were twisted and distorted over generations. Later, the Egyptians would adapt to the stories of the underworld, making them wildly intricate and labyrinthine. Their Book of the Dead and Book of Gates bore less and less resemblance to this place, and their priests pursued of profit. Then, when the Greeks began to arrive, they proved far in a series of incidents that were not repeated, five of them escaped. A warrior named Heracles, two kings named Sisyphus and Theseus, a poet named Orpheus, and a 
Trojan named Aeneas. They each told embellished tales of this place, how to get him, and how to escape. And so from Sumer to Egypt, Greece to Rome, your kind has always told each other stories about this place, though each story contained only a secret of truth. What? Let's talk about something else? Of course. What's your story? My story is many thousands of years long. You will need to be more specific. What do you wish to know? Oh, I'm interested in knowing all of those. You are a god? It is a matter of perspective. God is a label I was given by the mortals. Not one I gave this god. Your ancestors revered me because of them. My knowledge and technology made me incomprehensible. Just as you might seem so to an insect. But despite all that, there are rules even I must obey. Oh, interesting. Why do you look and sound like a man? I can and I all adopted this form long ago, so that we might better understand and communicate with our kind. In time, we grew fond of the sensory delights of thoughts, desire, joy, ecstasy, even rage and sorrow. Oh. Who is the woman in your left? This is my beloved. Like me, she has been known by many names. Perish to the to the Samaritans. I see. I can't turn away while he's talking. Or perhaps you might know her as the goddess of springtime, the cycle of life. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. I'm not looking too long. Where is that on your right? That is my servant. Yep. You would have met by the river, though she wears many faces and goes by many names. Kumul to Baal to the Samaritans, Kurti to the Egyptians, Carol to the Greeks, and Carol to the Romans. Her role is to ferry souls between the mortal world and this one, and to make their transition. She earned herself the infamous, if erroneous, moniker, the Feminine. We will talk more later, but now, ask your questions. Yeah, and for us it's Karen. Yeah. I'm not sure I really want to see it, but we're okay. May I see your true form? No. Okay. Long ago I swore to myself that I would remain in this form for as long as we remained among your kind. I must honor. Fair enough. I didn't really want to. Let's talk about something else. As you wish. Alright. Uh, I think we're getting to the juicy bits. Am I responsible for the that golden is the name your people have given to it, but yes, it is my doing. Why turn people into gold? That is a story dating back to the very first world. After the Sumerians finished building their city, the self-declared ruler threw a banquet to celebrate. Now this man was unmarried, and many women were vying to become his wife. A prestigious position of power and influence in the new world. Of all the women, two were particularly ambitious. Both were beautiful, and both arrived at the banquet wearing eye-catching dresses and beating faces, their hair woven in elaborate fashion. The first woman, recognizing that she would require an advantage to win the ruler's affection, draped herself in jewelry, ornate necklaces, bracelets and rings fashioned from gold. Seeing this ostentatious display, the second woman grew envious, for she had no such jewelry at her disposal. She prayed aloud to any gods that would listen to cover her in gold, and when her prayer went unanswered, she took matters into while the others indulged at the banquet, the second woman summoned the first for a discussion in a quiet place. She checked that nobody was watching, and pushed her rival from the top of the ziggurat where she broke her neck on the rocks below. But I was watching, and I decided to answer her prayer. I took the golden bow left behind by Diana, and 
shot that woman in the heart, covering her from head to toe in a layer of molten gold. And I left her to stand there, that she might serve as a grim reminder of what befalls those who sin in my domain. But that was not enough, for the entire city was tainted by her sin, and the wager could no longer be won. So I had no choice but to wipe the slate. I gilded them all to make way for a new way and began the wager again. And to this day, each of them and all who came after line the halls of this city inanimate but conscious, suspended in time with only their sight and hearing preserved, so they may bear witness to and lament the folly of your kind for eternity as silent golden sentence. Yeah, probably like screaming, don't do it. You'll be like us. So you're responsible for destroying all these lives? Where did those golden bows come from? What do you consider sin? How do you know when, when people sin? Well, let's go for the first one? I don't know. I give your kind a second chance of life, as well as ample warning about my bow. And when you disobey, and you always disobey. You force my hand, bringing terrible suffering upon yourselves. And so you ask if I am the one destroying your lives. And I say, no, you destroy yourselves. I am merely the means by which you did. Hmm, yeah. Where, where do you, did these golden balls come from? When my kin departed, they left behind which I inherited. The consolation prize of sorts. The golden bow originally belonged to one of my kin, the Romans called Diana. As my collection of golden statues grew, I chose the most ferocious among them and equipped them each with a duplicate of her bow and tasked them with hunting down the forsaken that might be asked. They became known simply as Furies. Yep. If you read, what do you consider sin? I've always considered that the cornerstone of morality is the ability to determine right from wrong on one's own. No attempt to lay out rules like your Code of Hammurabi or your Twelve Tables of the Roman Republic can ever cover all possible scenarios. This should come as no surprise to you, since the core principle has been expressed in many forms by many of your civilizations. The Egyptians made a rudimentary attempt with do to the doer to make him do. The Greeks refined it with avoid doing what you would blame others for doing. The Roman Stoics added, treat your inferior as you would wish your superior to treat you. Even the so-called cultists hiding among you often say, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It is the simplest of concepts, and each one of them is born with the faculties required to apply it to any situation. Yet none of the peoples who expressed this rule were able to uphold them. Curious, is it not? That principle is not in, as easy to apply as it sound. It doesn't seem like you've been upholding it either. Ooh. I've always lived my life that way. Why? It's not easy. <laughs> For you. Uh, how do you know when people sing? I am able to commune with all the statues in the city. Their ears are my ears, and their eyes are my eyes. Is Persephone connected to the statues in the same way? If she was still conscious, I suppose she could, but she's not. Why do you ask? Careful, he does not know I speak to you. Uh, no reason? Then what an odd question. Yeah, very odd question, sorry. I've seen some terrible things here that you didn't consider a sin. How do you let them happen? Do you plan to speak in sweeping generalizations? Or are you going to give me an example? <sighs> Dead bondage, experience with golden statues, abduction. Oh... Uh, abduction? Abduction? You mean the magistrate imprisoning his daughter in the system? Did 
did so because she sought to escape. A sin I take particularly seriously. Better that he stops her from escape, albeit brutishly, than I have to wipe up this entire city to punish her. Wouldn't you agree? Experience of golden statues. The midwife and the palace, yes. How is that inconsistent with me? She wouldn't want to be experimented upon if she was the guilty. The is do unto others, meaning other people. Those statues are something else now. Bloodless shadows, mere shapes of their former selves. They are forsaken. What happens to them is no concern of mine. That seems like an extremely literal interpretation of the If Alan is full of ambiguity, doesn't that make the ruler inherently subjective and unreliable? Hmm. Supposing you are right, then my law has been broken, and I should turn you all to gold immediately. Is that what you want? Nope. Nope, of course not. Never mind. I am right, and you know it. Uh... Uh, did I say something wrong there? It's no wonder people say the gods are cool. This just shows how unreliable and subjective your moral code is. You are no better at judging right from wrong than any human. Do you honestly think you could do better? No, but that's my point. Nobody's grasp of right and wrong is so perfect they can be trusted with all this power. You've become a tyrant. I should strike you down for that. Yeah. And if you did, you'd be proving my point. Hmm. Now, did you have any other questions before the reckoning? Oh, let's talk about something else. Very well. Nah, that's all the questions I had. Good. Then now it is time. Okay. Only it seems something is wrong. What's wrong? It has long been in my power to see to the hearts of mortals and weigh their deeds in life. But when I peer into you, I see only a blank slate, as if you did not exist until you appeared in this city. How is this possible? Carol, where did you find this? I do not. What? Uh, I'm from the future? If that is true, then I sense the intervention of someone else. Oh. How did you come to be in this time, Lord? Who brought you here? I was hoping you could tell me. I do not know. My kid departed long ago, and Proserpina has slumbered for 3,000 years. Why she doesn't want to be know that she's alive? Shouldn't you know this as the god of the underworld? I guess that means you don't know everything that goes on here. Tread lightly, mortal. Enough of this. It seems I will need to Why have you come here? What is it you see? I'd like to put an end to the golden rule. Or I just want to get out of here. Yeah, uh, um, golden rule, yeah. So, tell me, why 
should I recommend to the so-called golden youth? Oh, I thought before was stressful conversation, so now more pressure. If you're doing this for love, you should know that Persephone doesn't love you. Oh, how can you expect us to live without sin if you can't do it yourself? The golden rule is corrupting the city and ensuring you'll never win the wager. Hmm? The golden rule is corrupting the city and ensuring you. How can you expect us to live without sin if you can't do it yourself? Okay. That is a very serious accusation. Uh, what sin have I committed? What evidence do you have to support it? Uh, didn't you abduct a serpent and imprison her here? You've trapped people in the city against their will. You've given terrible punishment to hundreds of people, some for minor sins and some who commit no sins at all. Mm. Okay, I'll go with this one. These people were all dead when my servant found them. I gave them a second chance at life. Would you prefer to have simply ceased to exist? Mm, maybe? Then you still have the option to end your life, should you wish. And you are no worse off. Ah. Okay, we get a second chance. You've given terrible punishment for hundred people. Every one of those people was guilty of failing to ensure their peers lived virtuously. They failed collectively, and so they were punished collectively. The Romans understand this, as did the Greeks before them. Where I'm from, collective punishment is considered one of the most egregious crime there is if your position since were reversed you wouldn't want me to punish you for the sins of other people ah but i am a god and you are a mortal why would you expect me to treat you as i treat my own god you are not a peer you are not a respected equal let me ask you this do you treat insects as you wish to be treated do you care for their well-being your fellow man? Do you ensure they have food and shelter and protection from predators? Do you give them rights? Uh, lie. I, I, I respect ants, okay? Um, no. Of course not. Because that would be absurd. Just as it would be absurd for me to treat your kind as equal. You kind and my can't be so different given that you are in love with one of us. What makes you kind superior? My love for her does not mean I am not superior now that she is mortal. Or have it, perhaps you are not as different from humans as you think bah. for a moment i thought you might have been building to a point ah, poop. but i see now you are just a risky little creature <sighs> hmm the golden rule is corrupting the seed to ensure you'll never win the wager okay how so and be specific You've made a great allegation, and I expect you to back it up. Mm. Rufius has become so paranoid that he's jumping at shadows like Virgil's sexuality. Aurelia is exploiting people's desperation to escape by selling them hemlock. Meliolus have trapped people in dead bondage by convincing them that rebellion would break your law. Um, um, I don't think Rufius is that true, Aurelia. Uh, okay, let's go Aurelia. I admit, I have grown disturbed watching. Maliolus? His cruelty does seem to 
greater than the day. And Rufius? He is a volatile and confused fellow. Pathetic. You will need to do a lot better than that. <sighs> Is a very serious accusation, mortal. What sin have I committed? Uh, did you abduct Precipice? <laughs> I am well aware of the story told by the Greeks and Romans of my so called abduction. It is entirely unfair. My love was dark, and I intervened the only way I could to save her life. But didn't she choose to die? It was an act of rebellion against the others. She knew I would have to act to save her. And I did because I loved her. I love her still. Accordingly, I reject your argument. Alright, let's try let's try another These people were all dead when I Accordingly, I reject your argument. Okay. Let's try this one. Ah, then I am a god. Let me ask, do you ensure they have food and shelter? Mm. Of course not. What kind of makes you Where to begin? Our lifespans exceed yours by thousands of years, in which time we accumulate vast wisdom and a mastery of technology you cannot. Why does wisdom and technology make you superior? A lifespan, so you're not immortal then. Yeah. Because that is the source of our power. So you think you're not obliged to treat us fairly because you're more powerful than us? Hmm. What was the what was it the Roma's Stoic said that treat you superior? My kin have no superiors. Uh, but didn't you say Jupiter was your leader? There is a hierarchy within your kin. Hmm. That is true. Oh. So you're treating humans the way you would wish Jupiter to treat you? Make your point. I'm saying if you can't follow your own rule, how can you expect humans to? I'm saying you arrogant <laughs> moral hypocrite. <laughs> okay, we'll go first one. Let me ponder that for a moment. If you are right, then it would follow that all this time I have been in the wrong. But no. The very thought of it aggrieves me. How can I accept your argument when doing so would make me a tyrant and a Mm, it's the truth. You've committed atrocities and you need to own up to it. You're not a monster, you're a human and you made a mistake. Oh. What will persuade him? You're not a monster, you're a human and you made a mistake. It's the truth. You've committed atrocities. Alright, let's please him. Wait, what? What do you say? All humans have a tendency towards sin. We all do it sooner or later. Humans make mistakes. It's in our nature. Uh, okay. You have spoken eloquently. And yet, if what you say is true, it follows that my wage is fair. Perhaps he made a mistake too. Perhaps he wanted you to abandon the wages so Persephone would be free from you. Perhaps he felt threatened by you and didn't want a potential challenger. Perhaps he left you behind because even your own kind didn't want you. Oh. Oh. Oh, I don't know what to say. 
Perhaps he made a mistake too. You're not a better than us, you're a monster on a power trip. Perhaps when you took on human form, you took on some human foibles as well. Why can't we go, Elysium? Because doing so would violate the rules of my sacred agreement with Jupiter. And you would receive a hostile reception. The best I can do is return you to the land of the living. I will have Carol make arrangements to fend the others. But as for you, be aware you will be separated from the rest. Why? Once this exodus begins, the events that brought you to this moment will become of you is difficult to predict, but that is the risk you have taken by interfering in the natural flow of time. Now, are you ready? I'm ready. Farewell. Bye bye. He looks like a Batman for a second, shouldn't he? I'm gonna stop it here because uh, this episode has been recording for two hours. I'm not sure how I'm gonna cut it, but I will leave you here with Al and I'll see you in the next episode.